see you again then. Next Sunday, yes, we will have service next Sunday at 9.30 a.m., and um, we will enjoy the season together and certainly enjoy a lot of music together. So it'll be good to see you then, too. We're going to get to be really close this week, aren't we? <laughs> Let's stand now and prepare our hearts for worship. Almighty God, it's such a privilege to be here in your presence. Enable us to calm ourselves down enough so we can recognize your presence among us. Enable us to hear what you have to say to us, to see new truths, and to be able to receive them into our hearts. I pray that as the children sing and the choir sings and we sing along, that we will, in your presence, know fullness of joy. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen, amen. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be God's name forever. Amen. Beloved children of God, now is the time to wake up from sleeping. Let us confront our sins and confess them to the one who is merciful and just. God of new beginnings, we confess that we have not welcomed your holy reign. We have strayed from your paths. We prepare for war instead of peace. We dishonor one another and your creation. Purify us with your refining fire and set us again on your way of love that we may bear fruit worthy of repentance and welcome your coming among us. Amen. Hear God's words of forgiveness for you. People of God, a new thing is growing in our midst a tender branch, a living sign. By water and the spirit, you are joined to this wonder. You have put on Christ, and your sins have been washed away. Rejoice in the way of the Lord. Amen. Remain standing, please, for the lighting of the Advent candle. We praise you, O God, for this wheel of time that marks our days of preparation for Christ's Advent. As you light the candles on this wreath, open our eyes to see your presence in the lowly ones of this earth. Enlighten us with your grace that we may sing of your advent among us in the word made flesh. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose days draw near. Amen. communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with, with you. If you're able to continue to stand, please sing together, My Soul Proclaims Your Greatness, Mary's Song.
us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come with your abundant grace and might. Free us from the sin that hinders our faith, that eagerly we may receive your promises. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. And Sunday school children are dismissed to go to their classes. <coughs> Today's word we read responsibly from Psalm 80. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will your anger fume when your people pray? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one you have made so strong for yourself. And so we will never turn away from you. Give us life, that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved.
we're in the countdown, aren't we? The last seven days before Christmas. The fourth Sunday of Advent. Four candles lit. And when you come on Christmas Eve, the tall candle in the middle will be lit, the Christ candle. The waiting will be over, and Jesus the Messiah will again be born anew in us. As much as you have to do this next week, your journey through the next seven days will be nothing. Nothing like Mary and Joseph's journey the last week before Jesus was born. So let's step into that for a few moments this morning. They have been in the middle of a miracle for nine months. They've learned to believe that nothing, nothing, nothing is impossible with God. From the moment the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary and told her God's great blessing and favor was resting on her, and that, that God's great goodness and graciousness had chosen her to be the mother of the Messiah. From the moment the angel explained to Mary that the child would not have a human father, but instead the Spirit of God would hover over her and the life of the Messiah would begin to grow in her womb and it would grow for nine months and she would give birth to the long-promised Messiah, and he would be called the Son of the Most High God. From the moment Mary received that message, and she willingly agreed to give her all to be God's servant, to be God's instrument, as soon as that happened... And as soon as the angel also appeared to Joseph and said, you can marry her, Joseph, go willingly because the child growing within her is not the child of another man, but the child of God. And Joseph, you will name the baby Jesus because he will save the people from their sins. Once those first announcements had occurred and the miracle had begun. Well, ever since then, they've been living with the miracle of life, the growth of a child before birth, its increasing weight within Mary and its movement and kicking and her own growing awkwardness. What an amazing reality of new life and what was yet to be. A first child holds all the promise of whatever can be imagined or hoped for. Imagine what it would be like to wait for the Christ child who will bring humanity back into relationship with their creator, God. So Mary lived with an up-close reminder every single day of the miraculous workings of God within her, and she learned to trust more and more and more in God's goodness and God's provision. That must have just grown within her as the child grew within her. But I think the ultimate challenge for a woman nine months with child would be making the 90-mile trip for the entire last week or so, maybe 10 days, of her pregnancy. Now, it was 70 miles from Bethlehem to Nazareth, or from Nazareth to Bethlehem, but they couldn't go as the crow flies. They had to go up and down and around, and it probably added up to about 90 miles. And she wasn't um, in a leather-seated SUV, no, she was a, on a trip riding on an animal, bouncing up and down on the leather before it had even been removed from the animal. Or she may have been walking with Joseph. We don't know for sure. All the Christmas cards say there was a donkey. But we're not sure. If riding on a donkey, it would have been about 20 miles a day, eight hours a day, for four or five days. If walking, it could have been up to 10 days. 
This seems to me, as a woman who's experienced pregnancy, pregnancy and childbirth three times, it seems to me a huge, huge test of faith and endurance. The last week before a baby is born, its mother does not walk. She lumbers. She sways back and forth with her hand on her back. She doesn't sleep well for many reasons. It's almost impossible to change positions. She has to get up repeatedly during the night to use the bathroom. The, maybe, the baby may be kicking so hard it won't let her sleep because the baby wants her to get up and walk around because then it gets rocked and can go back to sleep more easily. They are very manipulative even before they're born. In the last week, it seems to mother that the baby will never be born, that her life and her body will never be normal again, and that this thing called pregnancy has gone on long enough and it needs to end. The waiting in the last week is almost unbearable, especially if she doesn't know it is the last week. And I could be quoted as saying three times, this baby will never be born. It's at this point that Mary has no choice but to make the trip from Nazareth to Bethlehem, knowing that the baby will be born there because that's what has been written by the prophets for centuries. But she has no idea, nor does Joseph, when or where or even how they will get there on time. But through the last nine months, their faith has been growing, and they know nothing is impossible with God. Not even a rough ride or a 90-mile walk. Not even the entry into a crowded city where there may be no place to give birth privately, wherever that would be. Nothing is impossible with God, not even a birth facilitated by two novices, a first-time mother and a first-time father. None of that would be impossible for God, and all of it would end with the birth of Jesus, Emmanuel, which meant God is with us. I imagine at some point, maybe right after the birth of the little divine human being whose human body was all encased, the almighty God in baby flesh. I imagine at some point, Mary and Joseph would muse as they watched him nurse or sleep or cry his lungs out. Joseph, Mary, God is with us just as God has always been, only now in living color, touchable, huggable. God with us. Obviously, nothing is impossible with God. Whoops, I just jumped ahead to Jesus' birth, but there's a long journey ahead this week before that happens. A journey that will be incredibly difficult and incredibly blessed as God pours out upon Mary and upon Joseph all the faith they will need and all the courage they will require and all the love and joy they can receive as they welcome the Son of the Most High God into God's own creation. Amen. Would you stand as you're able and let's sing through a few times, Wait for the Lord.
Let us confess our creeds of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life to come. Amen. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that is yearning for hope. God, our shepherd, let your spirit move with power throughout the church. Give discernment and wisdom to all leaders and lay people. Take away our fear so that we serve and love, confident that you are guiding us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our source, awaken us to the beauty of the earth and the marvelous variety of life. Unite us in repairing and caring for your creation. Protect creatures and habitats, especially during the challenges of winter. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our vision, raise up leaders in every nation who dream of freedom and justice for all people. We pray for the work of international organizations that promote peace and human rights. Show us how we can provide justice for those in need within our own communities and relationships. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our helper, come to the aid of all who cry out to you. Shelter migrants, refugees, and those fleeing war and famine. Bring relief to individuals and families experiencing hunger, homelessness, or poverty. We pray especially for the 42 families who will receive food baskets from our congregation this season. Enable them to experience more freedom and joy in their families as they celebrate your birth. Comfort those who are isolated or lonely. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Emmanuel, you are with us in our life together. We give you thanks for gathering us in worship and fellowship, and we remember those who cannot be present. Watch over those who travel. Heal the sick and speed their recovery, especially Doug Gertzkowski, Carol Allen, and those we name right now in our hearts. We pray, too, for those who struggle with depression, anxiety, mental illness, or grief during this season especially. Please comfort them with your loving presence and ours. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you are our hope. You bring life out of death, and you promise to be our God forever. Shine upon the faithful who now rest in the fulfillment of your promise and bring us also into your blessed reign of peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
God of our longing, you do know the deepest needs of our hearts. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Please share the Lord's love and peace with one another. Go ahead, you can get the offering plates. Let us pray. God of abundance, we bring before you the precious fruits of your creation, and with them our very lives. Teach us patience and hope as we care for all those in need until the coming of your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. I hear children in the hall.
first Christmas and the very first Christmas night, a wonderful star shone big and bright. It marked the spot where baby laid her sugar white baby dreams to play. Put this on a quiet hill. Put this on a quiet hillside. Watch the worries sleep one night. Then they a light came on them, near them stood an angel bright. Don't be afraid, he told them. Brand new you I bring. Or in this day in Bethlehem, baby Jesus, our Savior, King. Many angels join in praying, peace on earth, good will to men. Then the angel left the shepherds and went crying through Bethlehem. Shepherds flew to the place, found the baby in the manger bed. Lovingly they looked and see them, surely God loved them. You want me to play? You want me to play it?
Thanks, children. And teachers <laughs> and parents. indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ you comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness and so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Oh. he was betrayed our Lord Jesus took the bread gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this in remembrance of me again after supper he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. God of new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us out alive with justice, peace, hope, and love. And pray with me in the words Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Today we'll be sharing communion by intinction. That means that you will receive a wafer to dip in either the wine or the grape juice. If you have uh, a need for gluten-free wafers, our acolyte will be holding the gluten-free wafers for you and just mention to your server that you need gluten-free and she will make sure the acolyte holds this for you so you can take a wafer. If you believe that Jesus Christ is your savior, you are welcome to participate here in Holy Communion. You do not have to be a member of our church or even a member of the Lutheran Church. You are welcome. This is the Lord's table. And the feast is ready. Come and see how good the Lord is. Okay. Um, if, you, if you
you are at home, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God, for whom we wait, in this meal you give us a foretaste of that day when the hungry will be fed with good things. Send us forth to make known your deeds and to proclaim the greatness of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing. God, the eternal word who dwells with us in Jesus and who holds us in the grace of the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. And you may be seated. Please stand. <laughs> this is not a choir selection. This is a choir and congregation at the same thing. It sounds a little different, but you're going to enjoy it. So we'll know all the melodies except the old fashioned, old little song about the Lamb of God. You may not enjoy that as well.
Go in peace. Christ is near. Thanks be to God. We'll see you Saturday and hopefully Sunday. <laughs> Have a good one.